Welcome, fellow Lushes. Come on in, pull up a bar stool, and enjoy some cocktails with Dimples and the Beard. Oh, oh, that's good. That's good right there. That's the sweet spot. That's good right there. That's Punish good. her. That's good right there. I'm going to do some punishing. <laughs> that's good stuff right there. We're going to edit that out. This is the... Oh, Van Nuys. Van Nuys. Your eyes. No, Van Nuys. That's the name of the city. That's where she was born. That's where she was born. Born in hometown. It's also a dirty margarita. <laughs> dirty, all right. I am not looking forward to drinking it. It sounds disgusting, but sometimes those are what works the best. You never know. Tequila, triple sec, sweet and sour mix, and Kalua. Tequila. That was dumb. <laughs> Just killing time. Killing time. Just killing time. Here, let's put that up. There once was a girl named Naraya. <sighs> She's coming on the podcast for some reason. Here we go. We just keep getting beautiful women. What is this? What are these? What am I showing? That are willing to talk to us. You're t- showing Bikini Car Wash 1 and Bikini Car Wash 2. Starring our guest tonight, Naraya Davis, Miss March 1994. She was the star of these classic comedy movies. 1994. What were you doing in 1994? Jeez, I don't remember. I was turning 21. This was, yeah, Miss March, this would have been before I was 21, so I definitely was probably home spanking it for this because I couldn't do anything else. Have so, you thought of that? How many of you? Uh... How many of these women have I spanked it to? <laughs> I hadn't until just now, but <laughs> probably, sicko. probably all of them. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. I mean, the 90s were a prime time for spanking for me. So, And speaking of spanking. <laughs> it is. <sighs> um, yeah, the 90s, I yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I, I'm sure just about every one of these. I I think I'm trying to think when I started my first subscription to Playboy. It had to have been I was living in I was living in my first the first house I owned. I moved there in like what ninety? No, see, I bet no, I bet I I bet I wasn't spanking to these ladies because I I bet I didn't start a subscription. No, when did I get? No, yeah, I bet I didn't start a subscription until about two thousand and one. It's probably when I started my first subscription. I was about 28 years old. 28. Right? 2000. No, when did I? Um, Why can't I think of things right now? I it's subscribed. Like I, it's like I took a fucking edible, but I didn't. It's I, I subscribed when I moved in with my buddy, Doug Manser. We subscribed. And did you jerk off all over Doug's bed? Absolutely. You're welcome, Doug. I'm assuming you knew that, Doug. <laughs> Sorry if you didn't, Doug. Man, sir. Crunchy pillowcases just for you. He's like, what's going on? What's going on with my pillows? I'd be like, I don't know. I wonder if any of these, I wonder if any of our guests ever watched their episode and go, wow, they're so nice. The intros were so horrible. <laughs> if I'd have seen this, I wouldn't have came on. How did they turn from disgusting pigs to nice <laughs> gentlemen just like that? Well, to be fair, if they watched any of the episodes of prior. Yeah, we don't do a lot of intros for our guests, though. Sometimes we just don't. I mean, we forget about it, but um, we got a little bit of time tonight, so we're killing it by uh, introing this up. Just wait. There were a few episodes prior to the guests. Waiting for we got well, guests to join us. I assume she'll be here soon because she just saw the message. There you go. So she's pre- getting prepared. She's probably like Mariah I'm, Davis. I'm so nervous to go on with these stars. Well, that's true. We're huge. We're pretty big. We're pretty big. I challenge Logan Paul to a fight. (laughs) Or Jake. I don't give a shit. I'll fight both of you at the same time. (laughs) Either Paul. Yeah. How about that? Paul Paul bitches. Great. Now they're well, I guess it'll be a a tag team match. Oh, there we go. Tag team match. Now you're done. All right. 
we got a pretty lady in the waiting room and you don't leave a pretty woman you never waiting. leave a pretty woman like wait, waiting pretty woman walking down the street but fuck you jake paul pretty woman <laughs> he kick your ass i don't care he'll kick you. no i'm saying you'll kick his ass you know how much money those boys make by pretending they can beat people up uh-oh where'd you go i don't know hello hello what happened there oh there we go just took a second oh the pause but that's all right how it worked how well does technology oh technology working zooming in <laughs> hello hello can oh. you guys hear me we can hear and see you this is the best technology has ever worked for us <laughs> most of the time the beginning of these take five minutes to get everybody you know either talking or clicking on and... <laughs> yeah well i have i live like in the mountains so i have satellite internet and so if it starts acting weird that's probably why okay yeah we've dealt with that a little bit in the past too that's not a problem so oh you're you're in the mountains oh yes oh beautiful beautiful in, in california i'm in california yeah i'm in northern california oh awesome beautiful okay. up there huh so you've lived in california your whole life I have. I was born in California and I grew up uh, where I live now. So I'm back in my hometown and um, it's pretty awesome. It really is. Were you, uh, were you affected by any of the fires where you are? All the time. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. In fact, yeah. yeah. And in fact, this what was it in August. I had one that was like literally three miles from my house. Oh, and so it's a, it's a really... I was telling my kids, I said, I, I don't like summer here anymore. It's not my favorite season because of that. And it's really scary. Um, it's, I don't remember it being like this when I was growing up here. Of course, there's always been fires in California, but it seems like it's, they're all summer long now. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, oh, wow. it's, it is very scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's introduce you first to all the people watching. We're talking to Naraya Davis. Miss March 1994. Very nice. Oh my um, God, you guys have the bikini car wash. Oh my God. <laughs> one and two. That's amazing. I love it. Okay. All right. Sorry to interrupt. Proceed. <laughs> no, yeah, that so, was perfect. The way I, uh, yeah, so we recognize us. <laughs> continue the introduction. Star of bikini car wash one and two. <laughs> it was the first one was so good. Not really the star. <laughs> I was more of, of the co-star, but that's okay. okay. I was like, yeah, I was a bit player. No, I was one of the main characters. But you are. I, oh, I'll tell you guys about it later. It's funny the way I got into that movie. It's hilarious. The story awesome. is actually pretty funny. Cool. Well, which is great. We'd love to hear it. Um, but so we are. We are drinking tonight, and we like to try and make okay. a cocktail to mix with okay. our, our guests. It's okay. a little harder to get, but from what I know, you were born in Van Nuys, and that was your, that's your hometown? Right. For, so no, no, no. I was born in Van Nuys, mm -hmm, but I didn't, I, that's not where I grew up. So I consider my hometown where I grew up, but I was, that is my place of birth. There you go. Well, <laughs> that's what we got. The name Sorry. of the drink is Van Nuys. <laughs> no, you're good, but that right. that's that's the name of the drink. Yeah, they, they make so what's in it. Um, it is tequila, triple sack, sweet and sour, and then Kahlua to make it a wow. So, like, so it's another uh, another name for it is uh, dirty margarita. Okay, all right. Yeah. I've never heard of it, but I didn't I hope either. That it's good. <laughs> we, yeah, we haven't even tried them yet. So. We haven't tried them yet, but we'll find it's out like in a the, second. A weird combo with the Kahlua in there. That seems kind of mm -hmm. interesting. Kind of questionable. <laughs> interesting. There anyway. you go. Well, either way, we suffer for the craft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Thank you again for. Um, so once I find out your hometown or where you were born, we'll go with that. You were born, um, but your upbringing was not normal upbringing as far as your 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 parents hippie parents is right. what i'm hearing and right. what age did you finally get electricity so i think i was like 13 and my wow. mom got pregnant with my youngest sister and my dad finally got this idea that maybe maybe she would like want a hot bath or something <laughs> 
<laughs> so he illegally um, wired in electricity to our house, it, but it was still not, it was very not to code. Um, it was pretty uh, rustic, let's say. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I mean, growing up with kerosene lanterns, you know, we lived in a, like, like a log cabin, but you've got three small children and they're reading, you know, at night by kerosene lantern in this wooden house. So doesn't seem super safe, but we're all still alive and pretty resourceful. So, right. was, you know, it's, it's a good story, you know, right. for sure. Oh, yeah, that'll definitely teach you to be resourceful if you're, <laughs> you're doing that for the first yeah. 13 years of your life. Did you have indoor plumbing? Yeah. No. No, no, never at that house. No, mm -mm. we had an outhouse. Uh -huh. So, yeah. wow. I know being the wimp I am <laughs> in the middle of the night, having to go out there, it's almost worth saving yeah. it or, or holding it <laughs> but for as a little girl. Yeah, um, definitely. And like, um, you know, with snow and um, mountain lions and oh. just all sorts of, wildlife and the elements mm -hmm. um yeah but it, it it that's what it was so it's not like i had a huge like choice i couldn't make it them put plumbing in my house i mean yeah, yeah it was you your, know it was but i definitely normal. appreciate it was my normal for yeah, sure yeah, and yeah, i think my dad on something because he he um my dad has always lived off the grid and he continues to do so to this day he's in his 80s and he lives completely off grid and it was funny because when like COVID started and happening and, you know, I live in a really, um, I live in a really small town and very much country and like people here, there's a lot of people that never wore a mask. Like it just wasn't part of, it didn't affect that somehow COVID wasn't here. Yeah. Um, but, but I was thinking about, you know, how people were so dependent on, on, you know, basically the things, the things that you take for granted, like going to the grocery store and going to get this, that, but if it shuts down, it shuts down and then you're screwed. So like, if you're more, um, you know, independent and self, uh, you, you can take care of yourself. I and mean, that's what he's always taught us. Then you really are going to be okay. Because at the end of the day, if you are self-sufficient, then you're good. Mm -hmm. so I think I mean I think as much as everyone thought he was crazy and he is crazy but <laughs> I think he was on to something you know <laughs> no he just that was his way of living right? and good for him for being off the grid and it it. Is, it, yeah he still lives that way you guys like he's definitely off grid it's crazy that's yeah that's awesome does he have electricity today he does but it's powered by solar so oh, okay he, he invested in solar panels and you know if, yeah so he's all he is truly self-sufficient. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, he's so, old, so it's like he's going to need someone soon, probably, you know? Sure. So, I mean, but he has, I have two sisters and I have a half sister, so he, he's got a lot of children, but, you know, he lives kind of far out in the mountains. So, anyways, this conversation is not about my dad, but. <laughs> no, but um, no, I just. That, Curious about your upbringing. Yeah, it's it's an interesting it's an interesting childhood that you know. I mean, that's that's awesome. Yeah, definitely interesting childhood. Even for living in the mountains, like where I do, you know, I mean, a lot of my peers that I grew up with, you know, had you know ranches and farms, whatnot. But my situation was extreme, even for you know, for the country. So did did you grow a lot of your own food and stuff then as well? We grew everything. everything. We raised it, grew it. Yeah. I mean, it was, we were completely, you know, we, we didn't really have to go to the store for anything. We had goats, we had chickens, turkeys, ducks. Um, um, so we, my mom, dad would make like, you know, goat cheese and, you know, we had the goat milk and then we would slaughter the goats and have the goat, you know, the meat and all that stuff. So, um, and chickens and my mom had a huge garden and, we had a, a pond, so there was fishing, and oh. um, we had horses, and yeah, fun, Pretty cool, yeah, yeah, fun, fun living. That was fun. And what? So yeah, then... so they wouldn't really miss not having TV because we were busy, you know, 
living off the land and I was riding horses and, you know, I was, a, I was super into running and we lived in this beautiful place. So it was, I mean, when, when it was time to come in for dinner, it was like, my dad would blow this horn and we would come <laughs> from a hundred acres. And if you heard it, you know, it's dinner time. So, so it was a good way to grow up, I think for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? absolutely. You know, my son, I have a son who's like a total gamer, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I wish we would go out and, you know, wrangle some goats, but it's right. just a different world, now, you know? Yeah, it is for sure. For sure. So when did you move out? Was it eight, did you were at 18 when well, you went to California? No, I was or... 17. I was LA. So I was 17 and I got, the, I was so ready to be out of here. I was just like, oh my God, I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I really wanted, I wanted some like glamour, you know, I, I was sure. sick of the outhouse. <laughs> I was sick of the goats, you know, <laughs> I was like, I wanted something different and I got it for sure. It was talk about extreme. So like when I moved down to LA as, you know, 17, 18, people would find out about, you know, where I was from. And they'd be like, how the heck did you get here? You know? <laughs> and I don't know. It was just part of my, my, my story, I guess. Perfect. So was when you did go, I mean, was it, did you have a car? Did you hitchhike? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I had a car. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a car for sure. I got a car for my 16th birthday. I mean, it wasn't okay. anything nice or brand new, but it was still a car, you know? And, um, and so I, how did I end up down there? A friend of mine, one of my co-stars in Bikini Car Wash, um, she was living down there and she, her boyfriend at the time was a Chippendale dancer <laughs> and he was going on this world tour. Okay. And so she needed a roommate, someone to help her pay the rent. And I was this, you know, fresh off the farm. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go, I'll go. And I'll, I'll live there. And I remember I called my mom from the set of Bikini Car Wash. She didn't, we didn't have a phone in our house, but she had a phone at work. And I called her from a pay phone on the side of the road on set at Bikini Car Wash, because this was like early nineties. Maybe I had a beeper later on, but it, there was no cell phones or anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I called my mom and I said, oh, I moved to LA, you know? She was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> So I just, I just ended up, you know, moving down there and I ended up, I, I went with my roommate, Christy, Christy Dukai, um, and she was going to this audition for Bikini Car Wash. And I just went with her because just to go, you know, and so I was sitting out in the waiting room when she came out of reading for the part or whatever. And the producer, he was like, oh, he's, he saw me sitting there and he was like, do you want to be in the movie too? And I was like, sure. You know, so that's how I ended up in Bikini Car Wash. That sure, was it. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> like, I guess, you know, so that, that's how it, it was kind of by default. Right place, right time. <laughs> and how was the experience? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. 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 <laughs> well, when you look no, at I, I mean, a lot I, of fans of the movie. I mean, it's, it's, it's a regard. Cool I mean, yes. I, I, you guys, I remember like when, when I got for somehow I got a copy of it when, when it came out and my mom was visiting me down in LA and I decided it would be fun to watch together. Like idiot. I'm so <laughs> like, I was just super naive, you know, and I'm like watching it with my mom and my mom, she's like cringing in the corner. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, you, you were proud. You were, I mean, who can say you're in a I movie? I don't know if I was proud. I was just excited to see, it's, oh yeah, I'm in a movie. Here, let's watch it together, you know? So. Absolutely. You should, as you should be. Cause yeah, not everybody gets to be in a movie, especially so, so quickly. Wow. It was right away. Very so, right away, you know? <laughs> so how do you get, dis do you get discovered from Playboy via the movies or how, how, how did you get discovered by Playboy? So, so Playboy, um, okay. I, when I moved to LA, I was kind of, I wasn't really in like the scene because there, I was so young and, but I, 
I, of course we were going out to like nightclubs and, um, and back then it was all about like, if you were a pretty girl in LA, you should be in Playboy. Like that was the goal. That was the, you know, that was like all the shady guys. That was like their, their, um, like try to get in with you. However, you know, big, Oh, I know somebody, blah, blah, blah. So that was like kind of, I was surrounded by that kind of mentality. And so, um, but I, you know, I, obviously the first bikini college, I had my natural breasts. So I wasn't the typical, um, playmate nineties shape. And I was a little curvy, but I didn't, I, my boobs were really small and, you know, I, I just looked, I really did look like the girl next door. I, I wasn't all like Pamela Anderson, you know, I, I was really, really natural looking in that first one. I was really like, I didn't have a lot except for just my natural, you know, yeah, my hair was sure. pretty natural. Yeah. And so everyone was like, oh, you should be in Playboy, but you got to do this. You shouldn't yeah. be a Playboy, but you got to do that. You got to lose weight. You got to get your nose done. You got to get a boob job. Like there was all these things that I had to do. Right. Oh, no. So. Well, I mean, it, it, it's according to them. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I agree, but you're, yeah. well, no, I never got any work done to my face. I, the only okay. surgery I had was my, was my boob job. I know ne- when they told me I did need to get my nose done, I, I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. And photographers would tell me that I needed to get my nose, a nose job. And I would tell them, you know, listen, if you're a good photographer, then you can like figure out how to light around this nose of mine, you know? <laughs> oh, good, and great answer. Cause yeah. I was like, give me a break. Like, don't tell me what to do with my face, you know? Right. Um, the boob, that was more of like an investment I knew because I, you know, beyond Playboy, I had a very successful modeling career with like Fredericks of Hollywood, all the lingerie catalogs um, in LA. Uh, and that, I mean, I made a lot of money doing that and it was a great experience I loved it um so that for me was like an investment but so I went to this photographer down in Newport Beach and his name is Dominic Petruzzi Mm -hmm. and he um he knew Marilyn Grabowski who was the head editor at Playboy um Studio West and she was Hef's right hand man like she was the one who sat with him and decided who was going to be the playmate. I mean, of course he had the ultimate say, but she, he really, really looked at her for her input, you know, as far as like recruiting girls and, you know, who should be what month and whatever. And so when I, before I got chosen to be a playmate, they were searching for the 40th anniversary playmate who ended up being Anna Marie Goddard. And so they were doing this big hunt for this playmate, this 40th anniversary playmate. Um, so Dominic, we were doing like some headshots just for acting or whatever. And he was like, oh, do you want me to submit you for that, you know, the 40th anniversary? I was like, sure. People were always telling me, you're too average. You're like just a regular blonde, blah, blah, blah. You're nothing, spe- blah, 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 whatever. And so I was like, whatever, you know, yeah, go ahead and submit me. So like two weeks after he submitted me, they called me and they wanted me to come down and they didn't even do a test on me. They, they did a, they did a, it's called a posing test. So they already knew based on the photos that he submitted that they wanted me to be a playmate and um, that I was in the running for this, you know, 40th anniversary. And, um, and so when I went, I did my playmate test with Arnie Freytag and, uh, and they figured out what my pose was going to be for my gatefold, which is the, you know, the, yeah. the centerfold. Sure. Um, and so within six weeks I was shooting my gatefold and then, uh, three months later I shot my small camera and then I was a playmate in March. So the whole process from him, submitting me to me being miss march was like you guys it was like nine months wow yeah. Okay. Yeah. so it was, it was really a whirlwind you know and how did sure. you 
how did your uh, how did your gatefold photo session go? Because we've done it from talking to <laughs> playmates. Now we've heard the the horror stories about having to hold positions for hours at a time and uncomfortable positions, <laughs> uncomfortable positions, and yeah, yeah, it was hard. <laughs> it was very hard. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was really hard. But um, I, you know, I grew up running cross country and track, and I also uh, used to weightlift all the time, like when I was like in my teens. Um, so I'm very, I've always been in shape and, um, fit. Yeah. I have a strong core and, um, I think that, I mean, it was hard, but I've done a lot of more hard things for sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 So, and, and I worked, Stephen Wada, he shot my, I got to work with Fegley, who was Richard Fegley. He passed away and then he was out of Chicago and then, Wada, Stephen Wada shot my gatefold and then Arnie Freytag shot, oh, Stephen and Arnie shot my small camera. So I got to work with all three of those guys, like nice. legends in the Playboy world, for wow. sure. Yeah. I was really lucky, you guys, to be able to be, you know, this young girl who was, I was 20 years old and I worked with these amazing, you know, photographers and um, the girls in my year were outstanding and I'm friends with all of them with the exception of a few, because I don't know where they are. Yeah, okay. um, but just, I feel like it's just such an honor to be, you know, included with, you know, the, 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 the artists, the makeup artists, the women, the, just everybody. It's just really, it's, it's a really great, um, you know, part of my life. Yeah. We, we keep hearing so many wonderful stories about the, the sisterhood of it all yeah. and how you all just remain such good friends and, and support each other. And, and uh yeah. it's 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 absolutely true we you know because when you're in a situation like that because you know i was i did a ton of playboy promotions because a centerfold is just one part of it and then you know you do a lot of promotions and then you know hef you know he chose me to be a bunny as well so oh, okay i was doing you know everything for playboy i was doing the promotions the this and that and so uh, I got to spend a lot of time with these women and we got to spend a lot of time traveling together and, you know, behind the scenes in a situation like that is interesting. Cause you, you learn a lot about someone's character and you learn a lot about their personalities, their, you know, their fears, their hopes, their dreams, all that stuff, you know, it, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's a pretty interesting experience, um, in my life for sure. And exclusive. I mean, there's only 12 a year, right? Yeah. yeah and then, you know, and then, so yeah, it's very exclusive as well. Very honored. Yeah. Um, so very. that must've been being so quickly. And the crazy from... thing is, this is, this is really weird uh -huh. because I was a playmate 27 years ago. Right. Is that right? Yeah. And sure. I still get fan mail almost every day. It, I don't know where, how or why, but it's the trippiest thing to be that many years down the road and still be getting letters in the mail. Do you find somebody that, took the time? To, do you find that it's become? It's, yeah. it, do you find that it's become kind of you get more? Late, I mean, obviously with social media and you know, Inst I know Instagram has a page devoted to like '90s playmates. So a resurgent. I don't know if that's what it is. I, it's weird. I, I, I really have no idea. It's, it's yeah. boggling to me. Like, yeah. I just don't know, like, like why or how, and, but it's a lot of it is, you know, older guys, but then a lot of it is like women too. And then, oh. you know, younger people and it's just all over the board. So. Well, play, I mean, play, yeah. Playboy is obviously a, you know, an institution oh, in this and country. So, and so, so I have a 16 year old daughter. Okay. And okay. It's so funny because all, all of her peer, like her guy friends, they all wear, are wearing Playboy. Like they think they're like wearing the Playboy. That's in right now. It's like the logo is on yeah. their shorts and they're like hats. I'm just like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> <laughs> do, do any of them know that you were a Playmate? I mean, they all have freaking phones and they all can Google. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. 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 Well, there was always there was always the hot mom, you know. I, I remember my friend group yeah. back in high school. There was a hot mom that we. 
spend a little more time at that house. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> yeah, my daughter, she's so cool. Cause she's just like, Oh my God, that guy, like he thinks you're the hot mom. I'm just like, Oh my God. <laughs> you know that I'm like almost 50 years old. And she's like, I don't think he cares, mom. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, wrong, nothing wrong with 50. Right. Right. Nothing. At no, all. I, I, you know what? Talk about, you know, being grateful and, and, and good experiences. I'm like, it's, it's all good. I'm super, I feel so grateful to be healthy and, and this age, I know a lot of people haven't made it this far. And right. you know, That's true. So I'm, you know, yeah, it's definitely um, something that you should not take for granted. So I'll take it any day of the week for sure. Absolutely. I'm with you. I'm, I'm over 50 myself. So I'm not yeah, right. So, I'm not. You're just, not. Just the number. <laughs> just the number. I didn't think so. I'm close. I'm, I'm close, but I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> so how did you find? Don't or, worry, you'll get there, baby. Yeah, yeah. I'm almost there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, was I say between bikini, the first bikini bar car wash, and the second, which there wasn't a whole lot of time between the two making them, and then Playboy. Yeah. Don't you have downtime after you have a, a breast um, enlargement? In how- so let's see. The first one, uh, I was shooting it in October, and then I got the I got my first augmentation. Uh, God, I think it was like in March, and then. you guys is a long time ago <laughs> you don't so, then, say that's so so then yeah but not really so when you're no. young like you can recover quickly from things like okay. after my the one hair and bikini car wash too i remember i was you know all prepared to like have this downtime but it was probably six days later and i was uh rollerblading in like a sports bra that wanted to show them off, you know, I was like, oh my God, my boobs, you know? So, right. <laughs> so, you know, you're young, you're dumb, you're not really super careful. Um, not really a lot of downtime. It's okay. not for me anyway. Yeah, no. Um, well, how was this? I mean, how was making those? That had been, was it quick? Um, the pl- <laughs> I gotta tell you, the plots um, were amazing. <laughs> yeah. The budget, you know, was so good. No, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's no getting um, around. They knew they wanted to make a sex comedy, and that's what they did. You know, yeah, it, it was just right. um, music. It was almost like uh, music videos with the, some words between them. Yeah. You know, it was like, yeah. So it was, it was, it was enjoyable. Like montages, They're enjoyable. You know. Montage. Montage. Like, right. Car wash montage now, you know? Yeah. So uh it was it was fine. It was Did you have fun? Or was it yeah, long yeah, days? Definitely. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. Definitely. It was it was super fun. Um I was young, you know, and I was just going with the flow. I wasn't I didn't I did not move to LA with like a plan. I moved to LA with just wanting to get out of, you know the small town and I you know went to a junior college for a little bit but that wasn't for me and so I just kind of went there and I didn't really have you know you know goals as beyond just enjoying my life and and I never wanted to be a model that wasn't something that I even thought I could do um so I think my strength was, you know, when I got, when I was, became a playmate and then the promotions, like, you know, once they did the media training with me, but then they saw, you know, that I really enjoy people and I'm confident and, you know, I am not afraid to go into like, you know, a foreign country and schmooze with these people that don't speak English because it's okay. You know, it's like, I got this, but it, it, it was great because it taught me so much about the world and um yeah it was something that I I wish that you know my children could experience not playboy but traveling yeah that was one of the huge benefits of being involved with that company 
you know, was the travel and then the exposure to be able to go on to, you know, do like a contract with St. Polly Girl. And that was like a year long contract of, they traveled me first class to every state in the US. Oh, wow. And it was an amazing, you know, job because I got to see all these major cities in our country. You know, that, that's something that not a lot of people can say. Do you, do you have a, a favorite destination yeah. you travel to for Playboy? Okay, so when I was, let's see, this was, I must have, this was probably 95, because Jenny McCarthy was, I think she was Playmate of the Year in 95, but I went to the Cannes Film Festival with her. Oh, okay. And they hadn't announced that she was Playmate of the Year yet, so I was going with her and we went to the south of France together, just the two of us. We didn't even have a chaperone. And we ended up getting a car, driving to Monte Carlo, getting lost. <laughs> we ended up at this piano bar in Monte Carlo. It was most amazing. It was such a great time. Like that was a highlight of my trip, of, of one of my trips. Um, going down to Argentina with Ava Fabian. Um, great i mean phenomenal i love south america that was that was a highlight um i went to hong kong with shay marks i don't know if i don't know where she is she's one of the girls that i have lost touch with okay uh we went down we went to china together and that was incredible so yeah i have a lot of good experiences that's awesome yeah that's so when you a, sign up what for, a great way to see the world no go ahead memory. sign up for playboy was it uh did you have a how long of a contract did you have when you did the playboy um centerfold and then weren't you signed on for a certain amount of time for promotions and everything or no so yeah so the contract is for two years okay and then you know the promotions that's like an open-ended thing and that was with the agency and so um and then the bunny was through the agency as well so okay that was part of the promotions, but not every playmate got to be a bunny. It was very, very, very specific who got to be what color and all that stuff. It was very, that was a lot more strict than um, promotions. Oh, okay. Just wow. like, like as a playmate representing the company, the bunny was like, the rules were much more intense. And um, yeah, it was, it was a whole different ball game for, to do the bunny. So at some point, at what point were you the um, two girls eavesdrop line commercial? Does that ring a bell? Oh, my God. I think that was, <laughs> yeah, that was a oh God. You guys, I think I was like 18 then. That well, was that... probably around the same time at Bikini Car Wash Part 1, I bet. Okay. I watched the, the audition. The one nine hundred one. Yeah, yeah, that was. Yes, I think somebody sent me that. I have a fan that's on Instagram, and he's always sending me like these amazing like things that where I've never seen before. But I know it's me, and I'm just like, oh my god, where did you find that? Like <laughs> he can unearth these crazy uh, videos and YouTube things and and pictures that I I don't even remember taking. To be quite honest, it's awesome. The power of the internet. It was. Well, that was a, it was a, it was fun to watch the, uh, the audition process and you rereading, um, the lines over and over again, and then filming the commercial at the end. So was it an actual commercial? I think so. Cause I think I got home from like a Hollywood nightclub one time and I came home like in the middle of the night and it was on the TV. So I'm <laughs> pretty sure was. that it was, it was it ended up being a commercial. Why you, would I audition for something like that? Because <laughs> you, you, you do, you do with uh, um, what was her? That was Chris. That was your roommate, right? That you auditioned with. That was her. Yeah, that was her. <laughs> and you both made it. Well, they were quite amazing um, auditions. That's for sure. Three dollars a minute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Did you ever talk on them? Did they? You didn't. You just run the commercial. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm asking. <laughs> no, 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 no. Those aren't reserved for the actual pretty I, ladies. I, <laughs> I just think it's uh, it's one of those things that yeah, it's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that talented. Okay, come on. <laughs> uh, 
you you also got to kind of chum around with the uh the wrestling stars of wwe and and married with children and baywatch you got king kong bundy and hulk hogan and randy savage oh yeah were you were you a yes. fan at all did you know i worked with all the wrestlers yeah um i knew I knew who Hulk Hogan was, of course. Yeah. Um, Randy Savage, I only got to know when I was working with him. Okay. And he was trying to like recruit me to go on the road with him and all this stuff. And I was just like, that's not for me right now, you know. Oh, what would he have done with Miss Elizabeth? <laughs> <laughs> Start a rivalry and a, get you into wrestling? I don't yeah. know. And who else? Uh, King Kong Bundy. The, on uh, what's the announcer? What's his name? um would it have been mean gene okerland or um or are we taught like michael buffer him yeah okay yeah i worked i worked with him on like some budweiser commercial or something i, I worked with a lot of the wrestling guys a yeah. lot of them <laughs> yeah it was just it was the 90s it was like the early 90s it was that's what you know that's that was, what was popular. Yeah, extremely popular at that point. Yeah. 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 Do you enjoy acting? Do you when um, you yeah. don't do any recently, or have you? No, no. I mean, no. I did enjoy it. Um, I don't know. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah. I enjoyed doing live television more than I did like scripted. Like so, when I did Married with Children super fun great time Baywatch ugh, laborious like boring like just no, I wasn't really into that I like the live tv because I grew up doing like you know plays and stuff like that so I really okay. like the energy of that but I wasn't really into you know like made for tv movies and I don't know it was okay. It was okay. Yeah. I think once I became a playmate, there was no way that I was going to have an acting career without being completely typecast, at least at that point. So I knew that, you know, if they're looking for the bimbo, then I would probably get the part, you know? Sure. Yeah. Especially coming off the heels of Bikini Car Wash, you know, <laughs> my character was just brilliant. Well, they did seem to ramp from one to two, ramp up your character um, with the yeah. The blonde at uh, stereotype for sure. Your the, right. your lines. Well, Suzanne in... Summers, like. Yes. Oh, I love Suzanne Summers. Yes. <laughs> Number two, you. Yeah, had... it was like that character from yeah. the Three's Company. You know, it was like yes. it's just complete airhead. Yeah. You had a lot of lot of one liners in the second one. That's for sure. Which was which they were funny. Um, how was the what? How the was this? the set of us uh, the toxic avenger 4 with um lloyd kaufman he's a nutbag isn't he the director i don't even remember that <laughs> no citizen toxie the toxic what? avenger 4 was that a movie it was a movie that your imdb says you're in was it a movie yeah don't remember. Oh, he, are you sure I wasn't just like ever or something? I don't remember. Okay, hmm. Th that one you'd remember because it was like a like a horror movie or but you know. It's been a while. So I, I I I honestly I don't I don't I don't even remember to okay. be really honest with you. <laughs> so how how now you're into uh photography how did you get into photography was it always kind of a passion or is it something you've picked up recently no no i've been doing it for 20 something years um i think you know when i i was modeling full time um before and then i just got kind of bored of it and so i started producing and when i when i was in trying to produce like this online magazine, um, I was having really a tough time trying, like finding a photographer. And that was like right when things were going from film to digital. Yeah. And so these film photographers were super stuck in their way. And I knew that digital was the most like cost efficient way to go. So I, um, what I did was I, 
I bought, I, I, I ended up getting all this gear for cheap somehow. And then I, um, I started taking pictures of all my friends, like models, um, celebrities, um, you know, whoever needed pictures I would take. And then it's kind of a long story, but I ended up moving to a different country. I, I had my daughter. And then from there, I started really, you know, taking pictures everywhere I went. And um, so now like, gosh, I've been like shooting weddings for like 15 years. I do portraits, I do whatever people need. I also do hair and makeup. Oh. So I still get to be creative um, and make money. So it's good. And with on Instagram, do you have what do you have a website on there or the your uh, site for the photography? I, yeah, it's called Naraya Fox Photo. So because that's my that was my married name. I try to like keep it different from my modeling name because if you Google my my name, all these other pictures come up. So I yeah. kind of want it to be like you know, not me, you know, naked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is, yeah, this is about the photography, not about your modeling. So yeah, it makes sense. Let's yeah. Let's promote that. Let's promote your f- photography yeah. page for sure. Yeah, absolutely. How, um, how often do you, um, photography, you know, do you do get a lot of people with your friends and asking you to do things photography for them? Um, so where I live is like, it's a really cool town and it's in Northern California and it's a big destination for people. Like they come here and they get married. Oh. We have like 25 tasting rooms on a wine tasting on main street. So it's like people come here. And then especially last year with the pandemic, everyone left like San Francisco Bay area area and then moved up here because the price of homes was less expensive and the population was smaller. So people wanted to get out of the city. And um, so it's, it's quite a destination for weddings. For me, that works out because I know all the venues here and, um, and I'm really busy, you know, and I, and it's fun because I get to work with, you know, different people all the time and it keeps it, it keeps it, um, fun and fresh and exciting and, and, and I get to be creative and that's something I really love, you know? Yeah. Anything else you, uh, your, your endeavors are besides photography? Um, so like I said, I also do hair and makeup. I've been doing that for like, gosh, my whole life. Um, and I, uh, and I just, um, took my exam to do real estate. So I'm going to be selling homes soon. So that's going to be the next chapter of my life. Um, So that's cool. I mean, I spent the last like six months just studying and working and, um, you know, learning something new. So that's something I've always, I've always been into. And I, I like to have different you know, talents and passions. And I can't imagine being stuck in the same job for 30 years. Yeah. And it's, I mean, real estate is definitely a good time to, definitely a good time to get into real estate. Yeah. 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 It's a great time. So, um, yeah, so it's cool. You know, I'm just, I'm raising kids and taking care of myself and, um, just life is good. And I really, there's not a lot that I can, you know, complain about. It's awesome. It's a good, it's a good time right now for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Did you spend any time in the, the Playboy Mansion back in the nineties? At the parties or anything? I spent a lot of time in the Playboy Mansion. Uh, yeah, definitely. I, lots of parties. Um, I did, I worked with the E um, Entertainment Network because my best friend was Brooke Burke. And she was wild on E. Um, she had that show. And so whenever she couldn't do one, she would, they would hire me. So I, I traveled around doing wild on E a lot. And then also I did a bunch of uh, parties at the mansion for that network also. So yeah, I spent a lot of time there, not really in a non-professional capacity. 
I think I went to one party there that I wasn't working, but most of the time it was just, it was purely, you know, a paycheck. <laughs> oh, okay. Not, not okay. bad to be able to hang out at mm-hmm. the mansion and get paid. That's a good deal. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Very, yeah, it was, it was good. Yeah, it was fun. And I don't know if it's because, you know, I grew up in this, such a, a small town and very like country, like, but I just never really was like, I don't know. I mean, I, I've had my fun times partying and stuff, but I went to LA with kind of like, you know, wide open eyes and just kind of taking things as they come. And I thankfully never got caught up in any like dark, really dark darkness there. So yeah. that's, I feel very grateful for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It can happen in that city for sure. <laughs> Very easily. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Probably seen it. You get a, um, So you're very close with your playmates. Do you guys have any planned? Do you guys get together every so often every year? Do you have something planned or just random? We, we, we random. Yeah. So it's definitely like, oh, I'm going to be, you know, on the East Coast. I know that she lives here, you know, so I will make sure we get together, you know, and it's great. It's like, it's so nice to know that I can reach out to a handful of women that, you know, are good people and we have something in common and, and you can be real with them. It's kind of, it's, it's really hard to explain, but you know, a lot of people have this idea, Oh, playmate, this, that, or whatever, you know, this sisterhood, we see each other as who we are as people. Absolutely. And that that's pretty amazing to have that. So they, my playmate sisters don't have this preconceived notion of me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. even people that I grew up with that I'll run into, you know, they have this idea of who I am because of what I've done. Right. And it's not even really about who I really am, you know? So, so it's like almost like, a prejudice in a sense of, because of that, you know, and I can, I can say for both of us, we can, we can speak to how wonderful at least the playmates from the nineties are because every one of you that we've talked to have been nothing but, you know, nothing short of awesome. And uh, especially, you know, we echo Johnson and Karina Harney have done so much for us and getting us in touch with, with other playmates to talk to and stuff. So, I mean, we've just had nothing, got nothing but support support from you guys. So we definitely understandable how you, you know, support yeah, each other. Karina, yeah. I absolutely love those women. I love, like, I have so many great women that I, I could text right now and just to say hi and get love back. Mm-hmm. That's incredible to have that, that kind of friendship, you know? Yeah, it's, absolutely. That goes great. I love Barbara. Um, we go way back. Um, Karina is amazing. I, I, there's so many great girls like uh, Karen Taylor. I adore her. Tashara. Um, yeah, we just we just talked with talk? the, we just talked with Tashara on Wednesday night, and she was she was fantastic. Yes, and she's big into real estate. So yeah, is that if you need yeah. to reach out? She's, she's awesome. She's so cool. She opened yeah. her eyes to a lot of stuff. So, so yeah. yeah. We've had yeah. nothing but <laughs> right when you know her, you know her. She's she, she's she was, very um yeah, she's she's like seeking enlightenment and that that's the kind of people that I, you know, I want to be around. I want people who are looking for, you know, the best in life. I think that's the older I get, the more I realize like that's what it's all about, you know. So absolutely. I, yeah. I, I just re- yeah, the nineties. I, I think Tashara was in. I feel like she was. She wasn't in the nineties, was she? Wasn't she like a two thousand playmate or Nin- something? Nineteen ninety nine, <laughs> so almost two thousand. Ninety nine. Okay, yep. okay, but her. She's great. Um, Irina Voronina. She's one of my favorites. Um, she's really funny too. You guys should get her on your show because she's a comedian and she's absolutely oh. gorgeous. But she's from Russia. What's, yeah, she's I, awesome. What's her name again? Irene? Irina Voronina. Okay. You, you we'll gotta know out. who that is. She's amazing. I yeah, mm-hmm. we'll we'll have to have to reach out. Well, thank, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Absolutely. no, thank you very much. It was a it was a good time catching up or 
I, meeting catching up. You. Yeah, catching up. Old friends. <laughs> meeting you and, and talking with you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, guys. It was an absolute pleasure. All right. Have a good night. Yeah, you as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. The tavern is closed for now, but we'd love to have you back for more fun next time. Seriously, though, get your asses out of here. <laughs>